We'd like to invite you to come to Preserve the Tradition Museum of Natural History Foundation. The museum is a 60,000 square foot building. Uh, we have over 650 animals mounted in it from six continents, 37 countries. I think that it's one of the largest private collections in the Midwest, if you include all the mammals and the birds put together. And there's a few fish also. But uh, I think it would be an experience that your kids will, would really enjoy because some of the things we talk about with the animals, they'll, they'll remember forever. Like, for instance, the dangerous big five. That would be the lion, the leopard, the cape buffalo, the elephant, and the rhinoceros. And now they call it the big six, which is the hippo. And the hippo, of course, is a, usually a cow with a calf, and she, and she uh, is very dangerous, and she's killed more people than any animal in Africa. Stephen Slack has been a hunter all of his life, achieving the Safari Club's World Hunting Award, an honor shared by only a few accomplished hunters. The displays at Preserve the Tradition Museum are trophies he has gathered over many years and many hunts. Actually, I started hunting when I was five years old with my dad, when we primarily hunted pheasants and ducks, uh, which ducks are still my favorite animal to hunt. Uh, be out in a, in a duck blind when the sun's coming up, and uh, it's just it's just beautiful to be out there early in the morning. Between living in St. Louis and through Chicago and then to Indiana, we really didn't hunt. Then I was lucky enough to move to Minnesota, and thought I died and went to heaven, <laughs> you know, because I could hunt and be in the outdoors, and I just loved it here. So at age 35, I went on a hunting trip to British Columbia for 30 days, and collected five animals, and that's really started it and my goal was to collect then the North American big game animals. Once I got close to that, we decided to go to Safari Club International's convention and uh, I was hooked there, I booked a hunt to Africa. And then it's, that was the start of really going after it uh, extensively. And I hunted for several years and then my daughter was in college and she went with me to Spain to hunt Ibex. We were sitting around the dinner table and the outfitter asked if I was gonna put anything in the record book and I said, no, I don't do that, I hunt because I love to hunt. And my daughter said, why don't you do it? So I did, and found out I was close to the World Hunting Award for Safari Club. And then it became a disease. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a countdown to try to collect the animals. And it's about two, over 250 animals you have to collect to, to get to that point. So then at age 52 is when I, when I actually achieved the World Hunting Award. So it took from 35 to 52 to, to uh, collect those animals. How many continents and how many... Six continents, 37 countries. I hunted usually anywhere from one to six months a year. So that's, uh, that's how, we, how we had all began. We uh, have a farm here, it's 320 acres. We uh, built the museum, started in 2003, opened in 2005. You know, it's a 60,000 square foot building. We've got over 650 animals mounted in the, in the building, of which I've collected 99% of the animals here. The other ones are by my wife, my two grandkids, two of my grandsons, and uh, my two gr a granddaughter and two daughters. And so they all hunt, become a family affair. We are a foundation, we're a 501c3, and our mission statement is preservation, conservation, education. The education piece of that goal is to touch the kids, get them back outdoors, get them out from behind the TV, the computer, and their Blackberry, and get them outdoors and enjoy what God gave us in natural resources. We teach them that you don't have to hunt. You can always take pictures. That's just fine. But we want to get them back into the outdoors and, and, and respect nature. If we don't take care of what we've got, we're going to lose it. And we're trying to invest in those kids to do that. That's our goal. Okay. Yes? Is that That is an ostrich egg, yes. Ooh, where? Where? Whoa, that's big. If you look underneath the ostrich, there's two eggs in We've hunted in six continents and 37 countries, and of course the two continents that the kids know the most about is, of course, the good old North America, which is Mexico, United States, and Canada, and of course Africa. They relate to those, those animals because they read about them in their, in their storybooks and stuff when they grow up. So the other continents, which is the South Pacific, South America, Europe, and Asia, they don't really think about animals from those continents. What we do is we have focused on North America and Africa. 
The wall behind me is all the North American big game animals that you can collect. And then on the wall in front of me is the African animals, and there's over 80 some species of African animals in, uh, that we've collected from uh, different countries. We've hunted in Africa 14 times. And so what we do is concentrate on those two continents. Our, our, the wall to the left of me is antler deer. Our antlers are shed every year, they're hair, and they're called sheds. They're like your handprint. As the deer grows up and gets bigger, they actually antlers, you can print a deer by his antlers. They're basically the same, but they just get bigger and bigger. So there's 31 species of deer from six continents in here, subspecies that we go through and explain to the kids, all the way from Guatemala City to Mongolia with a white-tailed roe deer to red stag from six continents, uh, six different continents, there's red stags there. So that's kind of what the deer story is. It's a handprint uh, of uh, a shed and it's hair that drops every year, an antler. The wall to the right of me is horned animals and horned animals are like trees. Uh, horns grow out, they grow up, they don't shed them every year. And when you cut a tree down, you can count the rings in a tree and age it. The same thing happens with a horned animal. Horn, if they're not broomed off or rubbed off, you can count the rings on it and age the animal. So that's really the four messages that we try to get across North America, Africa, antler deer, horned animals, and have the kids walk away from it and, and, uh, and be able to talk a little bit about it. Uh, and then we go into the, the next room that we have, and that room is small mammals. And there's small mammals usually are collected from two continents, Africa and North America. And we go through and show them a North American animal, say a badger from North America, and then we show them the honey badger from Africa. Or on the back wall, we show them wild boar or pigs from six different continents. So every continent has a comparable type animal. Our third room is North American migratory waterfowl. 34 species of ducks, geese, and the swan, the tundra swan that you can collect. Uh, and there is a male and a female of each one of those. And we go through them to different categories of birds. There's the puddle duck and the diver duck group. And then of course your geese and the swan. So we go through and talk a little bit about those. Next room you go to is uh, migratory protected birds. We have two permits that we have, one from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and one from the Department of Natural Resources. And these are protected birds that have died, died from natural causes or have been hit by cars, and we find them alongside the road, and what we do is we salvage them and we bring them to the museum for the kids for study purposes. They're still owned by the federal and state government, but uh, we are allowed to have them on loan and we use those for educational things for the kids. The next wall in that room is wild, is wild turkey from the Turkey Federation. There are six turkeys that the Federation identifies. Two slams, one's the North American Grand Slam and one is the World Slam. The Grand Slam is the four turkeys of North America, the Merriam, the Osceola, the Eastern, and the Rio Grande. That's the Grand Slam of North America. And then two more, which gives you the World Slam, which is the Goulds or the Oscillated. The Goulds is from the Snore Desert, the Oscillated is from the Yucatan Peninsula, and you see it's quite a unique bird. So that's pretty much uh, what would be the tour that you would walk through. We have a classroom upstairs, it'll handle about 40 to 50 kids, uh, when, and we do classroom instruction up in that area. We're open from May 1st till September 1st in the summertime when the kids are out of school. We really enjoy having group events like the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts school groups or any private groups that you could bring to the museum. We have some facilities outdoors that they can use. We have archery equipment where, where we could teach archery as long as you, we know in advance and we can have a registered state instructor to, to teach the archery for safety. Grant County Shooting Sports 4-H has uh, archery classes in the summertime. We have uh, hunter safety classes that we can have here with the school kids at their year end will come here and they'll have uh, picnic lunches and I give them a tour through the museum. And in another month or so, we're gonna have uh, close to 200 kids come from five different schools, uh, fourth graders, and we will bring people in from the University of Minnesota, uh, uh, Grant County 4-H. We bring a gentleman uh, from Owatonna that's got a reptile museum. He brings reptiles in, so we have a reptile class. She can get pretty good size, but the boys do get larger. The record for a boy alligator is in about 19 feet, 2 inches. A nature class walk, I give a tour. We've had the Rapture Center come from the University of Minnesota. They bring owls and hawks and talk about them to the kids. 
So it's just, just basically bringing the kids together to experience the outdoors and, and get some educational things with wildlife. Preserve the Tradition Museum is located just off Interstate 94 between Dalton and Ashby. Hours are limited, so schools, youth organizations, and tour groups should call Steve in advance. He likes kids, and there are facilities to accommodate your group's needs, both inside and outdoors. <laughs>